for the first time since the early days of the COVID pandemic, the Federal Reserve is cutting interest rates. The Fed is slice, slicing half a percentage point off of benchmark rates. So joining us now to explain how this could impact your own finances is financial advisor Derek Kinney. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Amy. Good to be with you. Yeah, can you tell us, okay, so they, they had this meeting, the Federal Reserve. Can you tell us the key takeaways, sort of why they're cutting this interest rate first? Yeah, so think about uh, the Fed chairman and the board as sort of like the conductor of an orchestra. There's all these different economic indicators. They want to make sure that they're all playing the same tune. And the worry was inflation is dropping, but while unemployment has dropped a little bit, there's not as many companies hiring right now, which could lead to a recession. So the main goal of yesterday was to say, look, we want to take an aggressive stance to fight back against a recession, but also spur on economic growth. We know that when rates come down, people save less, they start to spend more, which is good for the economy. Got it. And so what, talk a little bit about what's changed since the last rate um, change, rate decrease in July. I mean, what is yeah, interesting? Since? Yeah, it's very interesting because the thought was they were going to cut rates a quarter point, and here they really shocked everyone yesterday, and we're going to cut by half a point. What their whole message was, we want to be aggressive, we want to be proactive. They felt like with inflation dropping, but less people being hired was really the, the red flag they saw waving, that they want people getting back to work, because if they're working, they've got money, they've got money, they can spend money, they spend money, the economy grows. So it's the Fed's way of saying we're on top of this, we want to be aggressive. The question now now will be, Amy, will they continue with half point cuts? We're going to see that in the next couple months. Okay, so now for everyone at, the, at their own personal level, what does this mean? I mean, will we start to see mortgages, like interest rates for mortgages go down and significantly, or what should we expect? Yeah, the answer is yes. And the question now is, what will people do? We've seen many people on the sidelines. Housing prices have skyrocketed. Interest rates have been high. And even a couple interest rate points can cause a couple hundred dollars of difference in a monthly payment, which causes people to keep renting, not buying. Here's what I expect, though. Rates will come down, but don't expect the price of houses to come down. That's the bad news. We're probably going to see an even more competitive housing market. You're going to have to get more creative, getting to know the seller better, or even writing a letter with your offer about why your family and their family connects, why you want their house, all the things that stand out because it's going to get more competitive. But let's say you're about to buy a car, you're going to see lower rates. If you have what's called an adjustable rate credit card, they're rare, those rates will come down. The bad news, though, is if you've got money parked in checking and savings, mm -hmm. those rates will also slowly come down as well. But the biggest thing will be mortgage rates are going to be dropping. Yeah, and that's I was going to ask you about credit cards, too, because we know that a lot of consumers have racked up a lot of debt over the last year. We've seen studies that have shown that and those interest rates on those cards are sort of at all. I say all time highs are very high. Um, and so if I don't have one of those adjustable rate credit cards, uh, I mean, I, really, there's no difference for me or, or what that's should right. I do now if I've got a lot of that yeah, debt? Yeah. Sure, good question. So let's say uh, one of our viewers has a credit card that has a 15% interest rate. That rate will not change. But what I would encourage someone to do that has quite a bit of credit card debt, while the rate may not change, use this opportunity, hopefully as you're making more money and so forth, and you've got some discretionary money, pay down as aggressively as possible the highest interest rate credit card that you've got. And at a minimum, at least get caught up because those things affect your credit score, which if you do want to make a future big ticket purchase or you want to buy a home, that credit score is really the oil that keeps your personal economic engine running. Higher score uh, means you really score better on better interest rates. Yeah, okay, so in case you missed that, what he was saying is if you've got multiple lines of credit, credit cards start with the one that has the highest interest rate and start paying that one down aggressively first. How quickly would we see this, um, the interest rates drop in, in our own lives, you know, compared to this whole Fed interest rate? Is it like the next day, the next week? Yeah, then when the Fed talks, their stuff happens fast. When it takes a bit of time to work itself through the system, as you can imagine with any government organization, Amy. And, and you know, typically the, the, the last 
thing affected is going to be checking and savings, but you will start to see mortgage rates drop right away. Mm -hmm. Now it's not going to be overnight, but over the next probably couple days, even weeks, rates will come down. So if there is a house you're thinking about, again, look at your budget. You never want to put yourself in a position where you're stretched too thin, but we're likely going to see housing sales start to go up. But also one thing for our viewers is refinancing. Let's say you bought a house and your rate was over seven, maybe seven and a half percent, this might be the time to talk to the same lender and say, look, I'm considering refinancing. Mm -hmm. What are the closing costs? What are the fees? That may be a way to save money and also shorten a 30 year to possibly a 20 year and really save you some money long term. But before we do that, do you think that it's going to go down? When would be the next opportunity for them to adjust it again? Like, should I wait and see if it goes down anymore? Well, we, we probably will see rates continue to go down. So if you're patient to play the waiting game and you're not wanting to buy a house today, you can keep waiting because rates will continue to come down as the Fed reduces rates, what they've said they will do into 2025 and into 2026. The question is, what if? But what I always tell people is, look, even if you pay a slightly higher interest rate to buy the house you want, mm -hmm. if it appreciates, if it's in a nice neighborhood, you're going to come out further ahead and you can possibly refinance down the road. So if you find the house you like, this might be the opportunity to take action today. All right, Derek Kinney, financial advisor, thank you so much. And that's exactly what the Federal Reserve wants is once you see these rates come down and go out and buy stuff. We appreciate your time.